Welcome to the Gazelle School of Business class on launching or relaunching your piano service business. This is one of many free resources we offer to the piano service industry that cover every topic you can imagine related to building and running a piano service business. So let's dive in. Most piano technicians are never taught how to launch and build their piano service business. I'm George, and today I'm here with Timothy Barnes, a registered piano technician and the co-founder of Gazelle. So it is really easy to successfully launch a piano service business. Okay, I'm just kidding. It's going to be a ton of hard work to launch and build anything. And that includes launching a piano service business. But launching can be easy if you, step one, focus on the right things. Step two, avoid common mistakes. And step three, make confident decisions, which is exactly what we're going to teach you today. So let's start by talking about step one, focus on the right things. Hey, George, I'm glad to be here. The key to focusing on the right things is to systematically tackle the right things in the right order. And that last part, in the right order, is the important thing to remember. This class is going to cover the cycles of growth that you are going to go through in the first five years of your business as well as your job as a business owner during this phase of your business. In fact, you can basically segment your entire career as a piano technician into multiple five-year segments. Yeah, five years to launch and build from nothing. It can take less, but five years is a good conservative estimate to get everything running really smoothly. And five years to fully establish your brand. Again, this can be done in less time if you bring in a professional, but the first time you do this, if you don't have any experience, uh, yeah. And about five years for the first time, you set a goal to triple revenue. And this one's repeatable. And when you're ready to think about retiring, five years is more than enough to prepare an exit strategy and sell your business. Now, during the time that you are building your business, you, as the business owner, have three jobs. Grow revenue, which is the hardest part of your job and will require the most work. Cut cost, which is super easy if you're disciplined and committed to being a good business owner. And efficiently generate profits, which isn't complicated, but it does take financial discipline. The best business owners do all three of these things in cycles, but they only focus on one at a time. The challenge is knowing which one you need to focus on at any given time in your story, right? Most people accidentally discover this trade and they can become a viable, it, it becomes a viable profession for them eventually, but it takes them decades to get anywhere. But you cannot wander into being a great business owner. So don't settle for accidentally spinning your wheels for decades in an attempt to build a business model around your passion for the piano. It doesn't need to take this long. So let's talk about a roadmap for your business. And that starts by asking a really important question. What is your goal? Essentially, what does the story of a successful business look like to you? If you don't answer this question, you're going to waste your best years and your best energy chasing the wrong things. So is your goal to do this part-time or full-time? Being a part-time technician can be a great choice, but it's not right for everybody. I could say the same thing about full-time work as well. And along those lines, do you want to be an employee or a freelancer? So being an employee has its perks if you're with the right company and don't want to wear 50 hats, but others want to be a freelancer working for themselves. Or do you want to become a business owner who supports a team? If this is you. In general, you're going to work harder, but you'll also have a much higher income potential. Or maybe you want to become a college and university technician or do shop work or field work. All of these have pianos in common, but they are completely different career paths that require a completely different set of skills. So how you define your goal will influence the decisions you need to make, okay? So how do you find your focus? One of the best things you can do is interview seasoned technicians who have done the type of work you're interested in. 
And with the right person, this simple act of asking them to share their story can shave years off your path towards achieving a similar goal. So after doing some research, your next step is to identify your stepping stones to a successful business because your path is going to be different than theirs. Once you have a goal, let's talk about how to get things done. It's called 12-week goals. This is the most effective way we have found for getting more done in 12 weeks than most people get done in a year. And this comes from a book called The 12-Week Year by Brian Moran. And boy, does it work. Here is the summary. So first, you identify hopes and dreams. Now, a hope or a dream is essentially anything you cannot achieve within the next 12 weeks. Next, we are going to break our most important hopes and dreams and aspirations down into three, no more than four, small achievable goals. Note the word achievable, that is the key. This is what you will be working on for the next 12 weeks. And by the end, you will have taken three to four meaningful steps towards realizing your hopes and dreams. Then you are going to take a week of rest, set new goals and repeat. So knowing your destination makes all the difference in the world. So at this point in your journey, you should have a goal, a reasonable expectation for how long this is gonna take, a basic understanding of your three jobs as a business owner, and a great way to stay focused on the right things and take steps to move towards them quickly. Which brings us to step two, avoid common mistakes. Never start a business without time or money. You need both to succeed. If you're missing one of these resources, then choosing to not start a business right now is probably the best business decision you'll ever make. To get this wrong is to fail before you ever began. But if you are ready to move forward between time and money, time is more important because it always increases in value. You have it in abundance when you are youthful, young, and stupid then suddenly it becomes more and more valuable the longer you live. So one thing is true. One year from today, your time is going to be more valuable to you than it is right now. All right, next, let's cover some important things you need to know about money in your business. The first is working capital. This is a critical part of your business's financial foundation. Working capital is the money your business needs in the bank to cover day-to-day -day operations. And at a minimum, it's three months of expenses. This isn't a lot when you first get started, but your working capital account needs to increase as your business grows. This guarantees that you always have the money in the bank when you need it. Next, let's cover tools and expenses. Tools cost money, but they are not a business expense. They are a long-term depreciating asset meaning their value goes down the longer you own them and you write off or expense their depreciation over time. And if you're wondering why this distinction makes a difference, it affects how you price your services and how you do your taxes. So talk to your accountant. Expenses on the other hand are direct costs of doing business today that you're gonna write off immediately like marketing, uh, liability insurance, and gas for your car. And in addition to depreciation, you pass all of these expenses onto your customer in the way you price your services. And by all means, be profitable. Profit is never an accident. You either plan to be profitable or you accidentally lose money. Now, this is an important enough topic that we have an entire video dedicated to it that you can watch online. The short version is, Unprofitable businesses don't succeed, they fail. And the profit your company generates is how you fund things like your working capital account and how you calculate the value of your company. So be profitable, don't fail. Which leads us to our final thing, the topic of pricing services. Your price should always take into account the things on this list. And this is a good time to attend our class or watch the video on pricing piano services. 
This will help you value your time, be profitable, and cover your costs as a young business owner. The vast majority of businesses fail in the first five years because of a lack of planning, a lack of capital, and a lack of profit. As a young business, understanding the things on this list will help you avoid mistakes and lower your risk of failure. Owning a business requires thousands of decisions, a few of which have huge ramifications. So let's talk about how to make great decisions in the early days of your business. We call these decision frameworks. Now, good decision frameworks help you run fast without tripping on your shoelaces. So decision framework number one, always tie your shoes before running. All right, number one really is take your profit first. You must run a profitable business from day one, period, end of story. And running a profitable business is easy. Never spend more than 90% of whatever you make. Because think about it. If you never spend more than 90% of whatever you make, you will be profitable 100% of the time. Next is simplicity. If something in your business feels overly complicated, it is. By owning a business, you're going to be flooded with more bad opportunities than good ones. And re by requiring everything you do to be simple, you can eliminate a ton of complex ideas that are actually just bad decisions. And make it easy. Make it easy for people to do business with you. Make it easy for you to run your business. Make it easy for people to work in your business. Everything you do should be easy. And if this is true, by extension, it will also be easy for you to grow your business. Next, do small things. This is the idea of the 12-week goals. By focusing on small things, you can achieve a lot more. Having a framework that says, I'm only going to focus on the part I can change today prevents you from getting lost in all of tomorrow's decisions. Next, focus on the right things. Just forcing yourself to ask the question, am I focusing on the right thing? Is exactly what you need to do every time you have a decision. Sometimes the answer is no or not yet, which means something else is more important than whatever is in front of you. But if the answer is yes, this decision that's in front of me is the right thing, then don't do other things. Do this. So be willing to do things that don't scale. If you see a good idea, don't wait till you know how to do something perfect to experiment with it. I mean, you don't wait to pick the grapes before you know how to make the wine. Just pick the grapes. Next, focus on things that do scale. We are only going to do things that don't scale just long enough to discover if it is a good, profitable idea. But then it is time to scale it. You took a risk and acted on an idea. Now it's time to turn that idea into a profit machine. Next, always improve your business mechanics. These are all the little things you have to do every day to keep your business running. You have to keep records. You have to invoice. You have to follow up on getting paid. And you have to pay taxes. You can't avoid these. They don't go away. So find ways to do all of these tasks efficiently. And lastly, know when to outsource different parts of your business. You're not always going to be the person who needs to be bookkeeping or answering the phone. There will come a day when you need to outsource certain parts of your business and find a way to be profitable as you do it. Now notice I said outsource to improve your business metrics in a way that was profitable. These decision frameworks work together and guide you towards great decisions. You should be able to say this decision is simple, profitable, easy for people to understand, achievable for me to do, not going to scale today, but I will scale it when I need, and is something that is necessary for somebody to do for my business to exist. You take one of those away and you have a bad solution in front of you. But when they're all working together, you're ready for step three, making confident decisions. The truth is, as a business owner, five years from now, you should be a different person. You're going to value time differently, be profitable, 
be a good idea ninja, and be able to smell a bad idea from a mile away. But most of all, you'll be running a successful business that you love. And the way you get there is by making the right decisions with confidence. So if we woke up in your shoes and needed to start a piano service business today, we would begin our journey before we officially launch because we all start somewhere. So during your pre-launch phase, your business mechanics should only take you about two weeks to set up. Anything more is probably too complicated. For example, you should probably be a sole proprietorship or the simplest form of a business entity your government allows, which is the simplest structure available to anyone. You should do your own bookkeeping. You should answer your own calls and use your personal cell phone. So setting up all of these things should not take you longer than two weeks because you're keeping everything simple and you're not making complex decisions. You know that none of this is permanent. This is about today, not tomorrow. The next thing you're going to do is take about a week and a half to do some basic branding and read the book Story Brand by Don Miller. Humans process everything through story, and your business is no exception. It's going to grow proportional to your ability to share your story with others. This isn't about creating a logo or a fancy business name. It's about sharing the story of your business in a compelling way. Next, watch the Gazelle School of Business video on selling your story. You don't launch a business through paid advertising. You do it by telling a great story and building something people want. So take an hour to watch this and learn how to present the products and services you decide to offer in a compelling way. Next, you're going to take less than two hours to create your social profiles on the top two social media platforms you use. Just focus on the ones you and the people in your network already use. And now is the time to build a super simple one-page website. All it needs is a nice photo, minimal text, info about your service area, your business one-liner, and a big book now button. And a few other things we teach you how to do in our class and video called building a powerful and simple website. You don't need to spend more than a few hours getting this initial website off the ground. Again, we're going to keep it simple because it doesn't need to be complex. All right, now that you have these tools in your tool belt, it is time to get your business cards printed. And again, they don't need to be fancy, just a name, contact info, email address, and website will do. And with that, you have spent less than four weeks preparing your business for launch. If you don't get distracted, you can be launched and off the ground in very little time which brings us to the second part of quickly launching a business, your soft launch. So keep your day job and side hustle this for a short amount of time. You'll get there, but for now, let your day job cover your bills so you can focus on growing your new business. To do this, immediately tell 100 friends about your new business. Now, the people you currently know are the cheapest people to network with because all it costs you is your time. You start a conversation, and the next thing you know, you're being introduced to the people who will become your customers. And this is a great time to watch our video on finding and retaining new customers. But essentially, standing up and saying, hi, I'm another piano tuner, isn't going to get you anywhere. You need a better approach. Next, we are going to personally pass out 500 business cards to meaningful people in the community. If you ask any seasoned technician the secret to growing a business, they will say word of mouth. But the truth is, the first 100 appointments you get are going to come from pounding the pavement, not word of mouth. Word of mouth referrals will come in time. But right now, your job is to pound the pavement and get the word out. And of course, start scheduling appointments. Your soft launch is basically the first 30 appointments you schedule. All you need to do is prove that you have the ability to pound the pavement, turn some revenue, and get appointments. And with 30 appointments behind you, it is time to pick a date for a grand opening. Your grand opening doesn't mean to have a bunch of fanfare, and it doesn't mean that you are doing this full time. All this means is that you pounded the pavement and you proved to yourself that you can fill your calendar with work that turns into revenue. 
you are simply putting a stake in the ground to say, this is where my journey starts. This is officially the birthday for your business. In the first year of your business, your first goal though, is simply to find clients. You need to find your tribe. Then you are going to start getting online reviews. Every time you do work for someone, you need to get paid with an online review and hopefully some cash too, right? These are real reviews from real clients, not your aunt and uncle who live in another state. And we have an entire class and video you can watch called Landing the Five-Star Review. Great online reviews are how you get word of mouth kicking. They help you reach into groups of people who you don't know from Adam. Also, start pre-booking your return appointments. Every time you walk into an appointment, you should walk out with the next one already on the books. This is a really small thing that pays huge dividends. And the last thing you need to do in the first year of your business is focus on giving out estimates and condition reports to all your customers. Now, over time, these estimates compound and start increasing your revenue from returning customers. So be sure to attend our class or watch the video called Creating Estimates That Sell. We have years of data showing that on average, technicians using Gazelle's estimates are bringing thousands of dollars of new revenue each month into their business. Additionally, every year, piano technicians around the globe are quoting tens of millions of dollars worth of estimates in Gazelle and using these to rapidly fill their shops and grow their business. If you spend all your time doing these four things, you'll be doing all the right things during your first year of business. And with that, you've made it to your second year. You deserve a party. Take a moment to celebrate because some never make it this far. The first thing we are going to do in year two is codify your year one habits. Everything you just did in year one is important to continue doing. So find a rhythm and then add three things to this list. First, study your year one services by volume. You'll need a spreadsheet or a super complicated analysis. You probably know what this is right off the top of your head. And next, you're going to focus all your creative energy on doubling revenue for this item. This means doing more of whatever it is. This could also mean raising rates so you don't have to work as hard. Regardless, identify what this is in your business and then ask the question, what do I need to do to double revenue for this item? And while you're doing that, in the back of your mind, you are simply going to begin studying and paying attention to what the second best service is in your business by volume. So we can focus on doubling this later in year three. So just keep paying attention to this because the tools you use to double your number one service are gonna come back and we're gonna reuse those tools next year. Now, again, if you focus on these four things during the second year of your business, you will grow so much faster because all of your energy is confidently focused on the right things. And with that, congratulations, you've made it to year three. So let's grow revenue and trim fat. You know, 30% of businesses never make it this far. You're beating the odds. And you've already proven your ability to double revenue from your primary source of income. So like Tim said, we're going to focus on getting to $100,000 in total revenue which is only $400 a day, and you can easily get here by doubling your second most common service, the same way you doubled your primary service. And part of getting to $100,000 a year is cutting dead wood. That's right. You have been in business for three years. It is time to review some expenses and fire some bad customers. This will help you be more profitable and free up time to focus on your third year goals. So next, we're going to build a better website. If you remember, we got to this point on just a one page website. So now let's spend a few weeks building this out to make it more robust. And you might even consider hiring this out. With your new website, you'll be positioned to start doing effective paid online advertising. But be careful, there's nothing worse than paying to send people to an ineffective website. Doesn't look like much on paper, but trust me, this is enough to fill all your spare time in your third year of business. Yeah, and George, I think it's important to know that this doesn't look like a lot, 
But keep in mind, you are currently doing $100,000 worth of revenue. You're doing all of that work and you're adding this in your spare time. And But if all your creative work is focused on these things, uh, you, this is what you need to be focusing on during your third year. All right. And that brings us to your fourth and fifth years of business. And we are going to focus on one thing, just grow revenue. Now that we have cleared the $100,000 in annual revenue mark, we are going to focus on getting to $300,000 a year without killing yourself in the process. Yes, I said $300,000 a year as a solo freelance piano technician without killing yourself in the process. This is possible, but there's a catch. Because you crossed $100,000 in annual revenue, your business is hitting its first stage change. So at this point in your business, no matter what you do, your revenue is going to plateau unless you solve these stage change challenges. And we cover this topic in depth in our video called 3Xing Revenue. Here's the summary. During a stage change, you're going to have to improve your people, product, and process parts of your business. It is possible to grow past $100,000 a year in revenue as a solo freelance piano technician, but it isn't easy unless you improve all three of these parts of your business. So people, which includes you and anyone you might hire, Right, this could just be investing in yourself and becoming a better business owner, watching some videos, doing some training. It could also be becoming a better technician, adding some skills. You need to change you. And anybody you add into your business will be solving the people part of your business. And we have an entire webinar you can watch for free on this topic called hiring your first office assistant because offloading or outsourcing this part of your business will help free up time for you to grow elsewhere. This is a people change in your business. Next, look at your products because you need to refine your existing service offerings and probably add some new ones. Now, keep in mind, a solo freelance piano technician doing $300,000 a year in revenue has shrunk their product offerings, not expanded it, and they only focus on their most profitable services that are inside their wheelhouse. They don't sell a bunch of stuff that doesn't bring them revenue, right? They hone in on the things that absolutely work for them and their business. That's how they scale up. And lastly, you need to look at your processes like client acquisition. This is probably the biggest process you're gonna have to change, but essentially all the processes that you use in your business between $100,000 and $300,000 of revenue need to become a well-oiled machine. And all of this together is a multi-year project. But by year five, if you do the right things, you could be well on your way to doing $300,000 a year in revenue as a solo freelance piano technician. And that is how you launch a piano service business. To grow beyond this, you definitely need to consider building a bigger team and adding more technicians. But $300,000 of revenue for one person is nothing to laugh about. It's a significant achievement. And the key is to ultimately build a business that stands out in a crowd. 50% of small businesses fail in the first five years. Don't be one of them. Be the one that everybody talks about in your city. And focus on growing what works for you and your business. Your path is not going to line up perfectly with what we outlined today, but if you follow these steps, it also isn't going to be that far off. You don't need to waste five years of your life doing things that don't work and losing a ton of money. All you have to do is make the right decisions at each step of the way. And the truth is, with these tools in your tool belt, you can go from someone who has no idea how to launch and build a piano service business to the premier technician in your city. If you believe you can be the best piano technician in your city, I guarantee you, you can. Just follow these steps and make confident decisions every step of the way. Gazelle School of Business is a free resource that covers every topic you can imagine related to building and running a piano service business. Here at Gazelle, we focus on technicians that are frustrated by inefficient scheduling of appointments, struggling to keep up with sending out estimates and invoices on time, and lacking enough monthly revenue to be consistently profitable. And the team at Gazelle is excited to help you find the tools you need to save your time and wow your customers 
so you can focus on growing your business and doing what you enjoy most.